Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining today's session on some of the new admin capabilities that we're going to be introducing today to help your overall office servicing. My name is Amesh Manzakani, and I'm a program manager within the office engineering team focused on helping organizations like yourselves be a lot more efficient uh, with, you know, staying up to date on the latest version of Office. Uh, so that's kind of the, the topic for today, and being able to ensure that you can stay up to date uh, by leveraging leveraging some of the new capabilities that we're introducing uh, in today's session where you can get better insights, more control over your, uh, your office apps, as well as being able to offload some of those uh, you know, burdens of being able to update on a monthly basis uh, while being able to ensure that you could see the overall health and performance of those apps, uh, not just during a deployment, but throughout the overall life cycle, and that's between deployments. Um, so let's kind of jump in to first really understanding uh, why are we really focused on this? And that's because uh, based off the number of research that we've done internally, we've seen a, about 41% of organizations are really having a hard time keeping up to date on the latest version of Office. And what I really mean by that is I'm talking about those who are trying to keep up on a uh, you know, on the current channel or the recently announced monthly enterprise channel, um, there's a lot of manual process that is being introduced, even though that they are trying to get those updates. Uh, and, you know, it's taken a while for those updates to be uh, delivered to those individual endpoints. And so we want to ensure that we can help organizations really get the latest and greatest updates uh, in the shortest time possible. But now you might be asking me why? Why is that really important? Uh, there's a number of great benefits uh, for not just only you know yourselves, but for your end users. One, your end users can get the latest and uh, greatest you know set of capabilities and services that we're providing in all, in the Office apps. A lot of the new uh, cloud-enabled intelligent tools to help them save time uh, and the effort of doing things. Like one of my favorite ones around uh, is around PowerPoint Designer, um, and that's because I can create PowerPoint presentations with very few clicks than uh, what I had previously had to do before. And so uh, that set of capabilities has saved me so much time. And so it prevents also users from going and getting third-party tools that may or may not be uh, approved by your organization policies. Uh, and at the same time, as they are using these new capabilities, we're able to get that feedback directly you know, from your users and be able to turn around either new capabilities or even bug fixes at a much faster cadence, uh, which I know is a great benefit for a lot of IT organizations to ensure that their users are up and running and happy using the products that you are delivering directly to them. Uh, in addition to that, you know, security is always top of mind. Uh, so being having the latest uh, security patches available to you and deployed that uh, in a timely fashion so that you're not leaving yourself vulnerable uh, to any potential uh, vulnerabilities that uh, that have been identified and of course addressed by us. So a lot of great benefits to ensure that you have the latest uh, version available to you and your organization. Uh, but we're, you know, and what we're hearing from organizations uh, today is that they want the ability to go faster uh, and get the latest version, uh, but they don't want, you know, they want to ensure that we can also reduce their overall total cost of ownership and not increase their uh, workload while trying to do that. And so uh, what we don't want to do is be able to take our old set of methodologies where we're acquiring bits, we're testing it, and just doing all of that process really fast uh, where it's going to you know, overwhelm any organization, anybody trying to make that happen in a much shorter period of time, but really leveraging data and insights to understand how do we better uh, take those set of bits and go through its overall life cycle and make that a lot more efficient. And finally, you know, ensuring that we don't really need an on-prem infrastructure uh, to be able to deploy those set of bits. Now, we know there's great reasons for why we have an on-prem infrastructure today. Um, you know, bandwidth is always a huge concern. Uh, so we're trying to fin figure out better ways of leveraging the Office CDN to be able to deliver those bits. Uh, and we'll talk about more of that 
of, of what we're going to be doing there uh, in the near future. But let's kind of uh, dive into, you know, what we're presenting today and what we're going to be able to deliver. So as I mentioned, you know, we have uh, three key things that we're delivering and leveraging, you know, anything that we build, leveraging those three areas that I presented just a second ago, where we're saying is, you know, how do we provide you with the right set of insights, as well as control over your organization in an easy and really efficient way, where you're not building scripts or being able to do uh, things in a more complicated way that I, I know a lot of organizations are really faced with today. So we'll, ta we'll talk about that and talk about some of the capabilities that we're going to be introducing today, uh, as well as then being able to, you know, leverage leverage some of that predictable cadence that the recently announced monthly enterprise channel is providing and being able to, you know, automatically service those uh, to those devices while still maintaining that right set of insights and control uh, that every organization really wants to see. And finally, we'll deep dive into some of that, you know, health uh, information where you could see how things are going, like I said, not just as you're doing deployments, but even between deployments to ensure that any other environment environmental changes that are occurring within your organization aren't affecting the overall behavior and performance of your office apps. Now, uh, just a quick recap, I kind of mentioned it earlier about the new monthly enterprise channel. Uh, it is uh, something that, you know, we've been seeing a tremendous amount of positive feedback from organizations where they are getting a lot higher predictability, uh, you know, where it's delivered every Patch Tuesday uh, with all the capabilities that, you know, are available in the current channel, in addition to all the fixes, uh, security updates that, that are available to you. And then, you know, there's that semi-annual channel where it's mainly reserved for a lot of the highly critical set of devices or, or those set of apps um, that just, you know, cannot afford to, to have those changes. And we're getting a lot of great feedback for uh, those users who want to see faster updates, you know, uh, newer uh, features, new fa faster fixes uh, coming in. And so that's why the monthly enterprise channel was developed and introduced earlier this calendar year. Now, let's kind of really dive deep directly into what are we announcing today? We're announcing a number of new capabilities. And so the first thing that we're doing is providing you with the right set of insights and control for your organization. Uh, we've enhanced the way uh, the click to run service, which is being delivered in the office apps to be a lot more uh, intelligent in the sense that they're delivering insights directly to our service, uh, which I'll show you a better demo today to give you things like inventory. And in an inventory, it's not just gonna be a table of you know rows and rows of information about every single de office device that you have there, but really giving you insights uh, that help answer your commonly asked questions. Things like how many versions of office do I truly have in my organizations, which ones are out of support uh, if I have a lot of them or, you know, if I don't, um, are there any, you know, um, you know, how many uh, office apps uh, do I have by channel or, or do I have a significant number in the semi-annual, the monthly enterprise? How is that distributed within my organization itself? Uh, how many are 32 versus 64 bit? And finally, you know, what are the total number of actual add-ins within my organization that I have? And this is just the tip of the iceberg where we're gonna give, be able to give you a lot of information over time, uh, but that is what we're starting with. And I think it's, it's really helping organizations understand where they're at from an inventory perspective now, taking that beyond just inventory, but really giving you a nice report uh, that says, how well are you doing from a security posture standpoint? Are you uh, delivering the right set of security updates to all of your office endpoints? And are they getting it in a reasonable amount of time? This is something that we are introducing um, here, and we'll show you exactly what that looks like once we get directly into the demo. And finally, giving you some of the uh, set of controls where I can now manipulate 
those Office apps by taking a version, uh, by manipulating the version of it. I can go back a version in the event I need to restore uh, to a last known version for any particular reason, move uh, those Office apps to different channels, uh, and again, different versions You by group. Uh, we'll be able to do by Azure AD group as well as individual users, uh, and and ring fence those multiple uh, devices. You know, uh, by a particular user. Again, jump right into the demo, and you know, why don't we actually just get right into it uh, and show you what I mean by this? Now, everything here that I'm kind of talking about today is going to be available in the Apps Admin Center, and you can get to it by going to HTTPS config.office.com. Uh, this has already been used by, by many organizations around uh, leveraging and creating new Office configuration files for net new deployments. Um, but once I sign in here, I also have the capability of doing things like uh, being able to do uh, policy uh, management and being able to look and assign uh, those group policies in the cloud, if you will, directly from here. But really what I'm going to be focusing on today is diving into inventory. Now, those of you who have not yet gone to, uh, you know, the Apps Admin Center, uh, there's two ways or two critical things you'll need to know. One, you're going to need either a global admin role or you're going to need to have the uh, Office Apps Admin role to be able to sign in here. And once you do, you'll have full access uh, to be able to do everything that I'm going to be showing you today. Uh, and so um, let's dive directly into it. Now, First thing I mentioned was the inventory. Inventory, again, is all about providing you with the most commonly asked questions and then being able to slice and dice as you need to get more precise answers as you uh, see fit. For example, first thing is, this, this demonstration, I got 12 Office app builds. Like, that's a lot of builds. How do I deal with them? Do I Should I be concerned? Should I not be concerned? Well, you could see already there's a number of unsupported builds. These are the ones that I truly have to be concerned about, right? I have a 750 devices. I can go dive into it. Again, see not just the build numbers, but being able to see if they are supported. You could see these are the ones that are not supported uh, and what channel they actually belong to and being able to see the number of devices that it's being affected. Clicking in a little deeper here, I, these are all the devices now that I can go ahead and export if I uh, need to, or be able to take action uh, to be able to get them onto the right. But quickly, within a few seconds, I was able to identify uh, these 750 devices that were truly not on a any supported build that was out there. The other thing that we are going to be showcasing here is the, that pivot by channel. Right, maybe we're looking at by from a channel perspective. How many devices I have uh, from on each an individual channel? You could see I can jump into any one of these. I'll go in the monthly enterprise channel, and yet again I'd see every device that is available to me, uh, and I'll split them out by by the individual build numbers uh, that I have there. The next thing I have uh, within my inventory is around, uh, of course, the total number of devices, which is 20,000 in, uh, in this demo tenant. Uh, there's a nice split between a, the 32-bit apps versus what I have on 64-bit. A uh, great way to help really, you know, for those of you who are transitioning to 64 to see how things are progressing here. And then finally, uh, giving you a great list of all the add-ins that you have within your organization. Now, these are looking at add-ins that are not inbox add-ins, uh, meaning Office already ships with uh, um, a number of inbox add-ins. These are the ones that are either you've installed, acquired, uh, within your organization. So let's go dive into the CRM add-in, for example, where I'll see the total number of installs in, uh, that I have. And you can see I have a whole version spread uh, for this particular, um, particular add-in, which is very concerning to me because why do I have this many versions? Uh, where then I can now dive into, again, those individual um, devices and see, you know, and, and be able to then uh, identify those and target uh, a new version of that add-in so I can update those. And so very useful information that we have directly in the inventory section here. Now, the other thing that I talked about earlier was around the security currency, right? So the inventory gave me a good quick insight about my organization. The security currency tells me how well I'm doing from a security posture. So under the health tab, I'm gonna see a security currency. Um, you could see that I'm not doing too well here. I'm at about 
a uh, little over 25%, a quarter of my organization, regardless of what channel they're on, uh, that are actually up to date, but the remaining uh, 14,000, not so much, right? So I can quickly go in and see which devices are not uh, current and then be able to start my troubleshooting exercise directly from there. Now, the nice thing around here is we have the capability of measuring goals. Now, this is not going to do anything but just give you a good measurement of how well you're doing uh, from that security posture. Let's say in this point, I want to say, okay, I want all my devices to within, you know, uh, let's bring it down 10 days. Uh, I want to get 95% of my devices to be updated with the latest security updates within 10 dates. I can save that. And then this will measure and see how well I'm doing after every Patch Tuesday is released uh, to then start counting down those 10 days to see if I'm going to make that. And then I can develop a nice little baseline from that perspective onwards and see how things are going. And now let's take a look at some of the actions that we have available to you. Uh, and the first one I'm going to show you is from the Action Center called Target Version. Now, if you recall, this gives you the opportunity to manipulate the actual version or channel an individual Office app is on. So let's go ahead and take the example. Let's say uh, if I say move HR um, devices to current channel, what you'll see is I have the ability to pick the channel I want. In this case, I'm gonna pick current channel and all of the particular versions that are available to me. I'm gonna pick the latest version and ensure that I can continuously keep all of these apps up to date uh, directly from the CDN. Now, there's multiple ways of being able to do this. I could search for a user and then from the user itself, I'm able to then uh, pick the devices that that user has. So I can pick one or multiple or let's go and look at um, you know a group in Azure AD group group that I can pick. So I'm going to pick up the Azure AD devices here, multiple, and then I could apply uh, an enforcement, meaning a deadline uh, for these individual devices to make that change happen faster, or I can just do no enforcement. So again, with a rolling deadline, uh, as soon as the device, uh, the bits are downloaded onto that individual device, I, uh, it will then do its normal countdown from there. Now, let's say I've gone ahead and create that for this purpose of the demos. I'm going to switch over really quickly and show you once it has started, uh, it will start, uh, you'll, you'll be able to get a status here. Uh, you'll eventually see the devices as soon as they're contacted and then see the overall status of when it's completed and, and going from there. So now that you've seen a demonstration of the new set of insights and controls that we're providing, I want to really talk about the predictable cadence uh, and service automation. Now, this is really great, especially leveraging some of that new capabilities in the monthly enterprise channel, where we are giving you that more predictable cadence on a monthly basis uh, that you know that you're going to get those quality fixes, the security updates, as well as net new capabilities uh, coming directly into that monthly enterprise channel. Now, the the thing that we're doing here is if you take uh, those devices and ring fence them into what we're calling the servicing profile, that's what we're going to be introducing uh, today to you, where you're able to then automate a lot of those updates while still having the right set of insights and control that you need uh, in order to ensure the smooth rollout of all the devices on a monthly basis. Uh, here's a great example. I mean, this is great for those who have general purpose apps uh, usage. And what I mean by that is if you take my device, for example, I have these applications, uh, you know, the office applications that I use, uh, Word for, you know, creating and reading documents, PowerPoint for creating, uh, you know, graphics and these documents and presentations that for like the one I'm showing you today, uh, just leveraging those basic functionalities that Office was created for uh, instead of the, the reciprocal, which is, you know, more of that business essential uh, leveraging of Office where I'm using critical line of business add-ins, macros, uh, and applications to generate IP, uh, you know, my set of device in the general uh, app usage, if my device were to go down, I can easily pick up a new device and be able to be up and running 
fairly quickly because all my files are saved in the cloud. And that's really critical to a really, you know, distinguish within your organization. So we believe you could take a lot of those devices and put them onto this first servicing profile that helps you reduce that overall burden of being able to deliver uh, those updates on a monthly basis. And not only will we deliver those in a safe manner, we're throttling them up uh, slowly within your organization. We'll be monitoring the overall deployment uh, deployment to identify if there are any errors and be able to show you what's there and give you that set of insights and control as if we do detect anything we will show you exactly what that uh, what errors those are, and then providing you with the right set of actions so you can be able to pause, resume, restore, and be able to uh, jump into that while also be giving you additional control uh, capabilities of ensuring that you do not update uh, that you know we don't update any of those devices uh, or apps itself during a set period of time. So we have these service. Um, windows where we where we do not service your device during that time uh, and we can target those by the entire profile or by an Azure AD group and leverage that there but while you know giving you additional control by you know ensuring that you can uh, set deadlines on your devices so you can receive those updates in a reasonable amount of time. So let me quickly jump into that demo and show you exactly what that looks like. Now, going back uh, into the config.office.com, I'm gonna go into the servicing profile and what I'll quickly see here is I've ring fenced about 10,000, about half of my organization into this capability where it's being updated from the uh, from the uh, monthly enterprise channel. And the next update is gonna be the 2006 rollout. Uh, and I'm getting that build information directly there. I can see it's active right now. Uh, and I have the ability to quickly pause this entire rollout in the event I need to for any reason, uh, if I'm not comfortable with the way this goes out. Again, giving you that set of control on your devices. And what you're seeing down below here is a ramp up of how we're delivering those updates. So we're showing you a prediction and waves of, of these 10,000 de uh, devices divided in about 10 waves, where about 1,005 devices are going to be uh, pinged and told to take those updates. And you can see in the first three waves, I've gone ahead and those devices actually received those updates. It's gone through its cycle. Everything looks great. Uh, while in wave four, five, and six, uh, we could see that 704 and four have gone, 602. And so they're continuously uh, getting updated uh, based on a number of factors, right? Are the devices online? Are they talking to our service? Uh, and then ultimately that we have these last set of waves that are not uh, updated yet, but therefore, uh, you know, we expect the rollout to finish in that 10 day period. Um, the example here is about us being able to deliver those updates from Patch Tuesday within that 10 day period of time. And then of course, if I've seen any failure rates, uh, I'm gonna be able to see exactly what's going on here. Uh, so let's quickly jump into some of that and see what's going on. We could see that I have about 15 devices that actually have uh, low disk space. I get a quick uh, information about uh, who they are, I can export that if I need to. I could find additional insights around it. But let's really dive into this first device uh, where I can go ahead and see that you know it truly does have a half a gig, uh, which isn't enough for us to be able to make those updates occur. Again, this is a fictitious demo, uh, so we're showing you some of the you know potential uh, causes that can happen here. Whereas in this set of devices, uh, during the install phase, we started seeing that there's some you know transport errors. Again, clicking on this link will take me to more information documentation as to what are the potential resolutions on that where the other one was fairly obvious that you know we just need more disk space. Uh, and so this is the kind of information that we want to be able to surface quickly at your fingertips. Now let's say we did identify some of those devices, those ones that have failed. I can quickly go in here being able to filter those. Uh, and we what you'll see here is two new capabilities where we can restore or snooze those devices. Now this is a fantastic capability here. Let's say you know some of those devices uh, did move forward 
to the na uh, to the new build, and we had some problems with maybe an add-in or it was some other environmental factor that did cause the issue. Uh, I can go ahead and cl click on Restore via an Azure AD group. Uh, maybe again, it is my human resources, uh, the, you know, devices. So I could say the ones in you know the US, UK, well, whichever one I want to pick here, and then be able to uh, you know restore those back to that last known version that they came from, and then choose if I want to snooze them for a period of time, whereas the next update would come ab uh, about, we would go ahead and automatically release them, or we can pause them. And this is great for if you had a third uh, party add-in where you need to wait for a signal from that, uh, from that ISV to know that you're ready to be able to deploy that. And then of course we have some deadline information that we can easily give to you, uh, where we can uh, have your users, you know, enforce that now or later. The alternative is uh, snooze, and these are for devices that have yet to be gone, have yet to be updated, uh, that you know will be problematic once they move. So uh, it is ensuring that we are containing uh, that, you know, from those devices from also becoming problematic uh, or put into a problematic state where I can go ahead and snooze that. Again, yet again, select those set of devices and be able to um, and, and be able to prevent them from moving forward, uh, you know, until the next available build is available. Now. Quickly diving into settings, this is kind of what I was talking about, some exclusion dates that are available to us here. Uh, let's say, you know, end of year, I wanted to ensure that we don't get updates. Uh, very popular for a lot of like, for the retail folks. Uh, we could say, you know, anywhere from December uh, 2nd through the 18th, just as an example, I can go ahead and be able to uh, ensure that none of these uh, devices are being updated. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll be able to set this up for Azure AD as well. And then finally, the update deadlines where we're able to you know, say, yeah, maybe I want every time the user receives the update, meaning when they download it, we're gonna give them about two days of a rolling deadline so they can go ahead and get the appropriate prompts uh, and go through the standard click to run capabilities to, for those deadlines to be done. And so those are uh, the servicing profile capabilities that you know I'm showing you there. Um, and so let's kind of quickly move on through the app health and remediation. Now this is a uh, a uh, some great new capabilities that I really want to show you. Again, giving you some more insights around the overall health of these applications uh, and giving you alerting around that, uh, so you are aware as to you know. Uh, what's going on with your environment? Again, not just during deployment, but between deployments as well. Um, and then finally, you know, there's other new capabilities around the OneDrive uh, deployment report. So you can see exactly what's happening from a OneDrive perspective for those of you who are also managing uh, the OneDrive sync clients. So you can see things like, you know, how is your KMF rollout uh, going, your known fol uh, folder moves, or look at the overall health. And because we know syncing uh, from that standpoint can be challenging sometimes um, and being able to see that report directly in the portal is great so uh, and and to get more information about all of this uh, we'll talk about it shortly after uh, this session but uh, you know after this demo uh, so there are some deep dive sessions that uh, other folks are going to be delivering on this. Now, if we go into the app health, as you can see, uh, going directly from uh, into the help uh, and app health section, I can see lots of great information. How is my overall organization or app health, uh, do, uh, you know, doing around across my app health? I can see the uh, metrics by the individual apps uh, and see how things are going from that perspective, or even ar across the my individual channels that I have here. Again, in pivoting based off how you see fit uh, in your organization, I can really deep dive into each and every one of these capabilities to see how things are going. Again, there's a deep dive, uh, there's a session that's going to really deep dive into all of this uh, by Javier Carrillo around Office Client. Uh, so I'll leave a link at the end of this presentation so you can see that more. And then if we look at uh, the OneDrive health capabilities, what you're going to see here, again, is to see how things are going within that, whether you have any sync errors uh, and how your overall KF, uh, KFMs are doing. Again, giving you more and more deep insights into all of these. Uh, and there's uh, a 
great session uh, delivered by uh, Gaia Carini and Carter Green, who are going to be talking about the deployment and config of the OneDrive sync. I highly recommend you check that session out as well uh, to really get more information uh, about all the capabilities that they're going to be uh, delivering in that. Now, everything that I've showed you today, other than the OneDrive capabilities, uh, are going to be available to you starting uh, October uh, of this year. We're going to be starting rolling out uh, to all the different regions. So take uh, keep an eye out for that starting this particular October. And we're going to be continuously updating these capabilities so you can see more and more uh, within the product. Um, you know, this is all going to be available in public preview. And then as we, you know, as we move forward and get some, um, and, and get some feedback from everybody, we're going to be releasing that hopefully uh, early next calendar year so you're able to see those capabilities. Uh, definitely keep in touch with us. We have a lot of great, uh, you know, forums and uh, venues to be able to keep in touch. Uh, we have the Office Insiders uh, tech community, which uh, we're, you know, you can speak to myself as well as other members of our team where we're constantly sharing tips, tricks, uh, and information on uh, best practices for deploying. Uh, also, send us feedback through the user voice channel. So a lot of great things. And of course, there's the Office Insider videos, uh, which are available in uh, through YouTube. And of course, if you need to reach me directly, uh, my Twitter handle is available here. So really excited, again, about these capabilities and features. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, once you have them, we'd love to hear from each and every one of you. How is it working? How are things going there? Uh, again, now here's the link that I mentioned. Uh, learn more by going to this URL to see all the, the sessions that were available, uh, as well as check out the two sessions I mentioned about the Office client held, as well as the uh, deploying and configuring the OneDrive sync client. Uh, so I think that's going to be great. Again, hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you very much. Uh, hope everybody has a great day.